Mm, how's everybody doing today? Great. This is the part of the service where we take communion. And why do we do that? <coughs> why do we take communion? Anybody? Remember. This is interactive. Remember. Say again. In remembrance. That's correct. In remembrance of what? The sacrifice. The sacrifice. And why do we need to remember the sacrifice? For forgiveness. For forgiveness. We're all correct. We're heading in the right direction. Mm -hmm. For forgiveness is exactly why we need to remember the sacrifice. But why do we need that forgiveness? Because we're sinners. We're sinners. We are sinners. Saved by grace. Saved by grace. And we repent. And we repent. All correct. What is the goal of this process? We need to be forgiven. To be with the Father. To be with the Father. I knew we'd get there. I, I was so confident in you guys. I knew we'd get there. And you guys all know this. We, this is why we do this. To be reminded of why we're, why we're here at this time. To be with the Father. To have communion with the Father. To walk with the Father. Who, who do we know that walked with the Father? Jesus walked with the Father. Let's, let's go people like us who walk with the Father. Now Christ lived in the flesh, so I don't mean he's not like us. But who, who was 100% man... 0% God that walked with the Father. Enoch was one. Enoch was one, yes. Who else? Well, Moses walked, he stood face to face with him. You know, it doesn't say that he walked with the Father, but he faced him. Who else? Abraham. Abraham had uh, definite communion with God. I don't know that he walked with the Father. There's one we're missing. Adam walked with the Father. He walked in the garden with the Father. I can't imagine what that's like. Um, I think that Enoch had a similar situation, just by the way the word tells us that he walked with the Father. Um, definitely, I was going to bring up Moses, Abraham, you guys hit all this on the head, kind of put this for me here. Um, they walked with the Father. They spoke with the Father face to face. Boy, do I desire that. I would love to walk with the Father. Amen. The thing is, we can't even have communion with the Father. We can't speak with the Father without forgiveness of sins. We are it would be like going into the king's court or into, you know, the fancy place with, with pig crap on our boots or something like that, you know, bring it to start counting here. Um, you got to clean yourself up before you go, you know, before the master or whatever. Well, the same is true with God. We cannot go before the Father. We cannot come into the throne room, so to speak, with the Father with this sin. It says that uh, the blood washes our sin uh, as white as snow. And without Christ's blood which is that sacrifice for us, without the remembrance of the fact of what he did, counting that sacrifice as payment for our sins, it says that we are uh, like dirty rags. Our sins look as dirty rags. I'm not going to go into detail the description of what the dirty rags are, but I think most of you guys know that verse. Um, we are very, very unclean and unworthy to walk with the Father. And the goal, coming to this point, is forgiveness of sins, but that is not the entire goal. That is part of the process. We need the forgiveness of sins for the actual goal, which is to be able to commune with the Father, to communicate with the Father, to walk with the Father. Uh, Jesus pulled away so many times to himself. He pulled off to the side to talk with the Father. So when we approach this time, it's not just for forgiveness of sins we're going for. We're halfway there. That's something that we need. But the whole point is to walk with the Father, be able to talk with the Father. So if we have to have this forgiveness of sins, to talk with the Father, to come face to face, so to speak, with Him. Where are we at without the forgiveness of sins? Can He, can He even hear us? Can He even hear our prayer? Thank you. He cannot hear your prayer until you have that forgiveness of sins. Until you're back in the flow of the Holy Spirit. And we think that just at any point, at any time, any trouble, we call out to God. I don't know the logistics of it, but the Word is fairly clear that. We are not in a place where we can communicate with the Father when we're covered in sin. When we, we're as filthy as dirty rags, we're not in a place where we can communicate with the Father. So this is crucial for everything we do as Christians. I, I, just a couple quick verses I pulled out here. Because everybody we mentioned was a Jew or maybe pre-Jew. Adam, Enoch weren't necessarily considered Jews, but uh, in that line. Now this doesn't just apply to Jews. Uh, the body is a unit. <clears throat> this is Romans 12, uh, 12 and 13. The body is a unit, <coughs> forgive me, and though it's made up of many parts, as though all its parts are many, they form one body. So it, so it is with Christ, for we are all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jew or Greek, slave or free, we are all given one spirit to drink. This is <clears throat> when we talk to the Father, 
It is by the sacrifice. We are, we are praying through Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, to talk to the Father. And without that path, no one comes to the Father except through me. Without that path, we cannot get to the Father. Um, we need this sacrifice that Christ gave to us <clears throat> so we can, uh, be, uh, we're able to communicate with the Father. So as we come to this time of communion, the point is the forgiveness of sins. But the goal is so we can talk with the Father. So we can come back in communion with Him. We have to have this part right to talk with the Father. And when I see how many times Christ wanted to pull away and talk with the Father, I see how important that must be. When I hear of the men who walked with the Father, stood face to face, Moses was physically changed just by being in his presence. He glowed. Not with radiation, but he glowed. I can't imagine what that's like. What that must be like to change you so much physically just to be in the presence of the Father. So as we approach this time, as we ask for forgiveness for our sins, as we remember Christ's body and blood, let's remember the goal. The goal is to be able to approach the Father, to hear our prayer, to come to him with our petitions. And we can't do that without this time. So let's pray. Father God, Lord, we know that, that you love us. You, you told us so many times in your word how much you want us to obey, that you've adopted us as Gentiles uh, just right along with your own, with your own children. And now we're all one <clears throat> through Christ. Lord, we thank you for your son. We thank you for the sacrifice that he made. We thank you for the ability to uh, just believe in him, no matter who we are or where we're at, and to, to use his sacrifice as payment for our sins, so that way, through your son and through your spirit, we can call on your name and you will hear us, Lord. God, we thank you for your word that describes this all so well for us. We thank you for this time to gather together in your house to be reminded of why it is we're your children and how that works and what it is we have to do to, to have you hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you and we just ask right now that you prepare our hearts as we ask for forgiveness for the sin that's in our life, the sin that um, just, just fills our life and makes us appear as dirty rags to you, Lord. We ask now that this, this sacrifice that you've offered for us, that we just have to accept, Wash us those sins clean. We praise you and we thank you in your son Jesus' name. Amen.